Eventually, on a college football Saturday here in Philadelphia, Lincoln Financial Field will completely fill up. It is a sold-out crowd. The Temple Owls, the home team, but there's a lot of Nittany Blue in this stadium as well as Penn State has come to Philadelphia and brought their faithful along with them. Hi again, everyone. Bob Wischusen, proud to be alongside Brock Eward. This season, Shannon Spake will join us in just a moment. Finally, we've got a college football Saturday to spend together. This is not the NFL. There is no exhibition season to work out the jitters. There's a lot, I'm sure, churning inside these players today as they take the field for the first time. Well, these Temple kids are going to feel the biggest crowd in the history of their program, and there's some good belief. There, there's some founded belief with so many veterans on this team that they can win this game, a game they've not won in decades. And on the flip side, I love hearing about chemistry and how close the team is and boy, how good Stanford was going to be this year, and then they get hit in the mouth and they lose. The chemistry and togetherness of Penn State will be tested on the field today by a veteran Temple team, and you'll see exactly what that resolve really looks like when it counts. Plenty of resolve with these Nittany Lions. Plenty of resolve in that tunnel as well. As the Owls about to take the field, the Nittany Lions are on the turf, and you mentioned being hit in the mouth. You mentioned being tested. That is going to be the theme all season long, it seems, with Christian Hackenberg. No player in college football has more to gain than Christian Hackenberg over the next four months. I really do believe that. An opportunity to be the number one pick in the draft. But he's got to play like he did his freshman year when he ripped up the record books at Penn State with a pro-style system that really, really fit his skill set. A season ago, he did get hit in the mouth, but it wasn't always pretty. And the touchdown to interception flipped over, and there was finger-pointing within. The chemistry begins with the head coach and the quarterback, and it will be a storyline we follow throughout this game. There's plenty of cherry and white in the stands here at Lincoln Financial Field as well as they welcome their owls here in Philadelphia. The Temple faithful would like to believe this is a rivalry, but for it to be a rivalry once in a while, their team has to win 31 consecutive losses against Penn State. Temple has a chance this year. Matt Rule, the head coach of the Owls, he'd like to change all that. He's standing by with Shannon. Well, thanks, Bob. Coach, what a way to open the season. Sold out crowd against your former team. Definitely going to be some emotions. How have your guys shown you in practice that they're ready for this moment? Well, we just completely focus on us. I mean, you know, we practice in the morning. We practice rain or shine inside, uh, I mean, outside. Our guys don't ever get you know, caught up in the moment. So it's a great crowd. Awesome. I'm proud of Temple and, and Penn State to show up like this. But I think our guys are ready. So your players came up to you this week and they said, Coach, Penn State pushed us around last year. What's, why is it going to be different here today? Well, I think anytime young people recognize what happened, then they have a chance to attack it. They're a really good team, but my hope is that our guys are ready to match the physical battle that we lost last year. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you very much. And, Bob, their motto all season long has been leave no doubt. Today, they get to take that motto to the field. And we'll see if they're able to carry that through because, Brock, we've been talking about this game all week. And there might be no singular question that you've asked more about today's matchup than really the question Matt Rule just asked. Can they match the physicality of James Franklin's snitty lines? The eye test is pretty obvious down on the field pregame. And you can look at linebackers, safeties, defensive ends. And, and you see four-star recruits and five-star recruits, including Christian Hass Hackenberg there at Penn State. And they've got the size and the measurables these pro scouts love. But on the other side, you have a tremendous defensive group in Temple. A group that held down Penn State 6-3 to three at half a year ago. It was a close game going into the fourth quarter. And I really do feel like they believe they can play with the bigger boys. And a chance to hit them in the mouth, as we've referenced a number of times, against a home crowd that will really have their back today. Well, Penn State won the toss and deferred their option to the second half. So they'll kick it to Temple, which means they'll put their defense on the field first and see if they can set that tone. And this will be the most different picture from last season because Temple has changed their philosophy, and I like it. Temple tough. What kind of kids are you going to be able to develop and recruit here in Philadelphia? Is it the spread system they tried to put into play a year ago and throw it all over the yard and put everything on the quarterback? No. They've gotten back to pro-style concepts. Heavy run. Use the strength of some of their young men at the line of scrimmage. They will slow this game down. They will limit some of the possessions, and they want to run and test some of the inexperience on the edge of Penn State. Joey Julius, a redshirt freshman, trying to take the place of Sam Ficken. That place kicker gets us underway. And here's Jihad Thomas from the goal line. Not much. Barely squeezes across the 15. So field position on the side of the Nittany Lions to start off. 
and a lot on the shoulders of P.J. Walker, the junior from Elizabeth, New Jersey, who might be back a little bit more in his comfort zone running a base offense rather than the spread that he was into last year. And statistically, his numbers mirror very similar to Christian Hackenberg. Came out as a freshman, true freshman, 20 touchdowns, was phenomenal, really came on the scene, even though the wins and losses didn't match. And then last year, you could see the same struggle in the decision-making, the touchdown to interception, four picks against these Nittany Lions last October. A little wide receiver screen, and Robbie Anderson has his first catch after being out for a year. Academic ineligibility forced him to miss all of last season. And welcome back to college football. Had his bell rung by Brandon Bell and lost a couple. You get the ball early into the hands of your most dynamic player, and there is no question that is Robbie Anderson. I don't think you're going to see Temple live in this shotgun bubble screens. That's a chance to get Anderson going early, and a much better chance there for Bell to unload is the junior showing you some of the force and the strength that Penn State brings defensively. Empty backfield on second and 12. Penn State shows blitz. They rush only four. Walker has time. He finds Anderson and makes it a manageable third down and four. Coming up as we take a look back at our impact players when Temple has the ball. And it starts with their best offensive lineman, Kyle Friend. You're going to see him communicate 33 starts, all-conference player, and he and his battery mates next to him have to handle arguably the best defensive tackle duo in college football. Austin Johnson, 330 pounds, going to push the pile. Anthony Zettel, a lot of YouTube hits in the offseason. More importantly, the quickness, the speed, the agility as a big man in the middle of the line to be a difference maker in situations just like this on third down. Again, a four-man rush. Swing pass into the flat. Just shy of the first down. It looks as if Raquel Armstead has been brought down. It'll be fourth and one. He needed four, got only three. And it'll be fourth at about the 24-yard line. And there's a real clear picture of a true freshman in Armstead. An excellent read by Walker getting the ball out of his hands. But you see the veteran playmaking ability of this Penn State defense. And I can brag about the Owls being the fourth best scoring defense last year in college football. Penn State was the number two total defense because of finished tackles just like that. They replaced Mike Hole with Wartman White. And in the open field, a concern always week one that tackling. Naeem really sharp to bring down Armstead before the sticks. So three and out to start the game for the Owls. And Mark Allen is back deep to receive the punt. Alex Starzik with an NFL kick, driving Allen all the way back to the 16-yard line. That's a pretty good change of field position after being pinned inside your 25-yard line. And now we've got Christian Hackenberg, who Brock, as you said, probably has more on his shoulders this season than maybe any player in college football, not just any quarterback. It's because 2,900 yards is a freshman under Bill O'Brien when everybody thought Penn State was dead. Everything they went through off the field and Bill O'Brien comes in and has a franchise quarterback as a true freshman really changed the perception and last year is difficult a year is anybody playing the position in college football. A little jet sweep to the freshman Brandon Polk who turns the corner and turns on the Jets. It looked like he might have stepped out of bounds back just inside the 40 yard line. And that is where they will mark the ball down at the Temple 38. A 33-yard scamper for the true freshman, Brandon Polk. 10 6 500 meters. You know that Temple wants to try to hit Penn State, that they're going to be aggressive early with a veteran defense that played well against them last year. What a tremendous call on that play script from John Donovan. Changed the picture, changed the eyes, and the game-changing speed there with Polk. And changed the tempo. So much for huddling up. Hackenberg has his team ready to go. A drop by Geno Lewis, normally a sure-handed junior. 73 career catches, but now it's second down and 10. Here's what I want to see from Christian Hackenberg today. I want to see sound fundamentals. First and foremost, he's 6'4", he's 230. Chip Kelly's on the field pregame, lots of NFL decision makers, but I want to see the fundamental sound from beginning to end. Akeel Lynch with his first carry. Stood up, but spins to the 32. That's a gain of five. Now it brings up a big third down and five 
at the Temple 32. Fundamentals and then situational football. You know in the, at the next level that's what it's about. Red zone and third down. Those money situations, a real challenge for the entire offensive group last year. Just 40 percent on third down passing a season ago. Got to be better right here in this situation of the game. The leading receiver in the Big Ten last year was Deshaun Hamilton. He's in the slot right wearing five. Instead, it's Geno Lewis, the target. He makes a third down catch, long throw. And Brock, that's an NFL throw outside the numbers by Christian Hackenberg. Sure was. It's anticipation when you're throwing across the field. I don't hear, care how gifted your arm is. That's a deep comeback all the way across, and he throws it before Lewis ever comes out of his break. It's excellent execution. Now Hackenberg pulls the string and short hops. What seemed to be a wide receiver screen that was set up and blocked pretty well to Geno Lewis. Back to back pictures tell you back to back seasons. He could be brilliant on one throw just as you want it. And then on the very next throw you've got to execute. A lot of players can be great for a game. Many can be great for three games. Do it for an entire season. Greatness at this position comes from consistency. thrown on second down and ten for five more to Geno Lewis so now it will be third down and about five. James Franklin John Donovan offensive coordinator said they're putting a lot more on Christian's shoulders. They want it. He covets that command. You hear him at the line of scrimmage. That's a check with me. He's looking at the box count the numbers a one on one outside and he's going to take that all afternoon. How much more is on his shoulders now than was last year immensely more because of the comfort everybody has year two in the system. Third down and five, looking for back-to-back -back third down conversions. Tipped away from Geno Lewis. So now what does Penn State do? They've got a red, red shirt freshman, inexperienced kicker. Will they be more likely to go for it in the red zone? No, they're going to bring out Joey Julius and try and get three. When you were 110th in college football, scoring 20 points a game on the opening drive, you take your points and you get your points. Fourth and one, a different story than fourth and five. Put three on the board and instill some confidence in the big boy kicker. Literally the big boy kicker Joey Julius some pressure on his shoulders his attempt for the first time from 34 yards away like a veteran right down the middle Penn State strikes first but Temple's defense gets a hold and the Nittany Lions have the early lead Bob Wischusen here with Brock Heward and Shannon Spake this is before the game are you tired of deflate gate we'll get ready Christian Hackenberg testing out the footballs, making sure that they've got maybe the right amount of air pressure. This is during the break. Here comes the gauge. Maybe now in NFL stadiums, Brock, they've got this equipment yeah, handy I, 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 because of maybe a story you've heard about over the past, it seems like, 10 years. Oh, the one that was talked about for 227 <laughs> consecutive days until the ruling? That one? Yes. And what's interesting there is, is they're measuring the Nike ball. Penn State with a Nike ball, Temple with a Wilson football. So could it be a little gamesmanship on the Temple side to say, hey, hey uh, that football for Mr. Hackenberg may be deflated a little underneath the level. Let's let's measure this thing. Remember, there's a lot of commonality between these two programs. Head coach Matt Rule was a linebacker at Penn State. These school, schools recruit with one another in this area of town, all over Pennsylvania. I like it. Jihad Thomas takes a knee. So now let's see how the Owls respond as they've got P.J. Walker under center. And a more conventional offensive look. Jihad Thomas, nowhere to go. Lost a couple. Now that's not what you're looking for if you're Temple. You want to get into a set where there's a numbers advantage for you. And you can see everybody here, and especially NASA, the defensive end for Penn State, Get up the field and reassert the line of scrimmage. That's what does it look like? Eight yards rushing, eight first downs a season ago in this matchup. Temple could do nothing. They felt helpless, according to their coaching staff at times, offensively. And you can't get any push, and the defensive line with four dominates your five. It can be an ugly afternoon. Breaking a tackle is Kip Patton, the tight end. And he turns nothing into something and again makes it a manageable third down and short. Kip Patton redshirted as a defensive lineman a year ago because according to the coaching staff we needed to toughen him up a little bit he's going to be an x factor for them this year they like the way he can catch it out of the backfield and this is very early an x factor kind of third down 
Keep your defense off the field. Limit possessions. Shorten the game. A big part of Coach Rule's game plan today. Here comes a blitz on third down. Walker can't beat it. Tried to find Adonis Jennings, and it'll be fourth and three. Pressure came from Brandon Bell, who was untouched on the blitz. That's a pretty common DNA of this Penn State defense. Going to be base early, going to put four down linemen, going to try to control that line, and then on third down, you will see lots of different pictures. Secondary blitzers, corner blitzers, nickel blitzers, putting the pressure in a one-on-one -on -one situation that Jennings and Walker could not finish. So here's Starzik to punt once again, the second consecutive three and out offensively to start for Temple. And this, a wobbly kick. And Mark Allen lets it take a hop. And it will take a Temple hop. All the way down to about the 25 yard line before it finally rolls dead. A 43 yard punt, Penn State, Christian Hackenberg with the football when we come back. That's Christian Hackenberg's development. He's got a tip ball up the seam, bounces around, and falls incomplete. A near turnover. It'll be second down and 10. And more man-to-man -man coverage. And I, I love what Phil Snow, the veteran defensive coordinator, is doing here to Christian Hackenberg. He's giving him some different looks. He's bringing some different stunts and a really nice job by Ioannidis, the senior himself, the redshirt senior, to get his hands into that throwing lane. So far challenging people on the perimeter in one-on-one -on -one situations. Akil Lynch brought down after a gain of about two. Third down and eight coming up for Penn State. And Christian Hackenberg off to only a two for six start for 15 yards. Situational football. He saw it in the red zone, a shallow cross, should be on the front shoulder, should have moved the sticks, did not. Settle for a field goal, third and eight, passing down situation. Got to be sharp with his accuracy and his decision making. Deshaun Hamilton in the slot right to the bottom of your screen. Hasn't even been targeted yet. Hackenberg looks that way on third down, has time, fires a bullet instead to Chris Godwin right between the numbers. And that might be the best throw we've seen Hackenberg make so far in the first quarter. That absolutely was just some zone coverage, quarters. All four safeties playing a quarter of the field in enough time to step up into the pocket. 44 sacks a year ago, got beat down and was retreating. That time could step up, use the force of that physical strength and deliver just a BB to move the sticks. Lynch finds a seam and there he goes. There's no one home for the Owls. Akil Lynch with a touchdown. That makes life on a quarterback easy. Just hand it off and watch him scamper. 41 yards for a touchdown. It's amazing what a first down and a third down conversion can do for the entire group. For those offensive linemen, we talked about the entirety of that drive to see something they didn't a year ago. And that's some real execution in the passing game. We saw Lynch run for a buck 30 on these guys last season in Happy Valley, and he's well on his way in this first quarter. Six plays, 75 yards, took just over two and a half minutes off the clock, and Akeel Lynch does work. Penn State's got the two-score lead. Bob Wischusen, Brock Ewart, Shannon Spake here in Philadelphia. A home game for Temple, but dominant start for Penn State. They've got the 10-0 lead, and Akeel Lynch capped the touchdown drive a moment ago to put Penn State up two scores. And a lot more points scored offensively here in the first 10 minutes than three and a half quarters in Happy Valley last year for Penn State. Two interception returns for touchdowns. It was six to three at half late, even into the third quarter. And you're starting to see some of that physical power and strength of Penn State. A quiet confidence their coaching staff felt about the work they've done over eight months. And Temple better respond in a hurry. The worst thing you can do with a home fan base like this is get buried in the first quarter. And Jihad Thomas gets to the 21-yard line. So now how does Temple respond down by two scores without a first down on offense so far? They'll run it. 
Iquel Armstead is out to about the 24 yard line for a gain of three. Gotta have patience. Friday night game last night in Boise. The Broncos all over the Huskies early 16 to nothing. Very similar, just controlling every phase of it. And Washington weathered the storm. Got a red zone stop. Move the chains. You have to get a first down here. You have got to start to feel good about your month long game plan. And it would go a long ways for PJ in this offense to simply be able to move the sticks, breathe in that huddle, and keep your defense on the sidelines. Again, it's the true freshman, Raquel Armstead, strung out, nowhere to go, maybe picks up a yard. Third down and six coming up. Yep. Good for a first down to John Christopher. A nice throw by P.J. Walker and maybe some confusion coverage-wise for Penn State. That was a nifty little pre-snap action there showing one picture to Penn State, and we talked about their defensive group doing it. They do the same thing there offensively to get themselves into a two-by-two -two set so they can have that, offensively speaking, rub route, defensively pick play, and get exactly what they want with Christopher finally getting that critical completion and catch to move the chains. That'll take us to the end of the first quarter with Temple trailing 10-0, but they do indeed move the chains for the first time this afternoon. Penn State on top by 10 after one. Just outside of downtown Philadelphia, start of the second quarter between Penn State and Temple. Here's that last Temple first Christian down. Christian Campbell's in because Grant Haley is out. Offensive players call that a simple rub route, trying to get exactly that look. That's why the pre-snap motion and formations to get the man-to-man -man press look. Campbell doesn't give the veteran Lucas any room to get through that pick play and a pivotal first down. Here comes the blitz under pressure. P.J. Walker lost the football. A scramble for it. Who's got it? The Nittany Lions think they do. Again, Brandon Bell with pressure on the quarterback. Knocked it out. Penn State football. Torrance Brown recovered it. Nobody's played faster on this field in the first quarter and a half than Brandon Bell. You've seen him on third down conversion stops showing the immense power he has and that time right off the edge. And if you don't account for him in your protection and you think you can slide away and get the ball out of your hands, you have no chance. True junior with another game defining play to add to his resume here early. Boy, disaster for Temple as they get the stop defensively with a couple of sacks and have terrific field position and then give it up with a turnover. Again, Brandon Polk with motion. Akeel Lynch takes the handoff, tripped up after a gain of three as we check in with Shannon. Well, Bob, I'll tell you, this defensive line for Temple, they're not thinking about the two stops they got. They're thinking about the fact that they've been scored on twice. They're angry. You can see them on the sideline. There's not a lot of celebrating. It's all focus. Remember, these are guys that got in a fight at practice earlier this week. An angry defensive line, Brock, what's that like to line up across from? Yeah, that's no fun. The bar is set real high. This is a very veteran team that was fourth best in college football last year, I'm giving up just 17 a game. So they need to play angry now, as this game is in danger of getting away from them. If they give up a touchdown here, Hackenberg trying to avoid a sack, goes down for the fourth time. Pressure off the edge from Tyler Matikiewicz, and now it's third down and long. And this script has got to change if you're a Penn State fan and, and you're on that offensive staff. Just took a beating Christian Hackenberg did last year. A big reason the fundamentals fell apart, a big reason the productivity took a serious dip. And this you got to get the ball out of your hands. You know, either schematically, through the progressions in your reads, you've got to have a place for him to go with the ball. But when you've got unblocked people coming on blitzes, you have to have a plan, both as play caller and, more importantly, under the gun. Play clock at one as Hackenberg gets it off. Looking for the bomb down the sideline to Deshaun Hamilton and just missed him. What a huge win this is now, assuming Penn State punts for the Temple defense. Sudden change, one play, they're right back out on the field, and they get a three downs and out with Penn State starting in Temple territory. It's remarkable how deflating sacks can be, and Hamilton gets behind an eight-man cover drop. 
Temple rushed three people. That should never happen defensively. And Hackenberg has got to flush that sack away because that throw is a throw he can make. You simply put more air under the football and let your star Hamilton go get it. Sean Chandler back to receive this butt. That's the intentional end over end kick. And does just what it's supposed to do. Spins like a pitching wedge down at about the seven yard line. Well executed by Daniel Pascarello. Penn State with field position and the scoreboard on their side. So with Naeem Wharton and White back in the Penn State locker room. Temple starts and runs right up the middle. Spinning three is Jihad Thomas. And he's close to a first down. Boy, run right at the defense's weakness once you recognize arguably their best second-level players off the field. That's exactly right. And, and nothing fancy about that. That third and one and getting the eye formation, kind of a slower developing isolation play. I don't like it. You know, that run on the outside, that stretch play, making guys move. And if you are going to run up the gut, quick hitter, trap it. Quick dive. Get, get right on top of those linebackers. If Jahad Thomas back in the game to the left of Walker in the shotgun. Walker on a keeper. Nice move in the open field. P.J. Walker. He's got another Temple first down. Two carries for Temple and back-to-back -back first downs. And now they're out close to their own 30-yard line. Still looking for their first points of the game, but now a little bit of rhythm on offense. And 10 runs, 8 passes, the kind of balance they're going to have to have to try to keep a really good defense guessing. On the ground again. This time, nothing there for Jahad Thomas. Trevor Williams came up and run support from his cornerback spot to cut him down. That's a loss of a couple. That's DOA. You cannot run that play into a corner blitz into the short field there. When you get on that hash mark, there is very little margin for error. And much like Hackenberg, and you have seen him and the mechanics of changing plays and checking protection. Same thing with P.J. Walker in the run game. And that time, a much better disguise for Penn State running right into a corner blitz. No go. That's Brock Hewitt on Bob Wischusen. Shannon Spake down on the field. Second down and long for Temple at their own 30 or their own 26 yard line. P.J. Walker sets up the screen. Aaron Pass. Now it's third down and 12. This two. is not an offense that can handle this down and distance. No, two offenses that struggled mightily a season ago. Two, two of the worst, frankly, in college football and a lot of statistics and categories and negative plays will crush you offensively as you can see, it's a warm humid day here at Lincoln Financial Field the first Saturday of college football with a little Keystone State game between Penn State and Temple it took Penn State on their first drive no minutes to get on the board third down crossing underneath wide open Ventrell Bryant he gets to the outside then tell Bryant crosses the 50. What a big third down conversion for Temple. And unlike running a play and a run play into a corner blitz, when you actually have some space and you can pick up that corner blitz and pass protection, you're going to have some open lanes. And that's exactly what PJ's group did. An excellent job by Thomas, the junior running back, sliding over, picking up the corner blitz, giving PJ a chance to scan the field. And Bryant, the redshirt freshman, someone they're really excited about. Chance to be special, according to their staff yesterday. Showing a little bit of speed and quickness himself. What a time for Temple to get their best offensive playoff, a gain of 25 on third down and 12. There he is again. Another catch for Bryant. Another Penn State. Soft coverage on the outside that Bryant is able to expose for a Temple first down. And a little bit of zone read is keeping the eyes. Look at the eyes of these Penn State defenders. That's all caused by that zone read action, and that's the true freshman read, kind of no man's land. Doesn't matter what game you play, you never want to be in between the zone read. P.J. Walker's had a couple nice runs with it, and he's staring down a true freshman that lets the ball sail right over his head. Brian in motion play action once again for Walker can't avoid the rush a big loss of 12 yards all the way back to the 45 as Carl Nassib gets pressure on P.J. Walker 
And once again, you can point so clearly to those negative plays. Excellent job by Nassib right there. And when you've got an elusive quarterback and you're a big frame guy, and just keep him in front of you. Shadow that quarterback. Don't give him a lane to escape. He finishes. But that's really disappointing. I'm watching two juniors that have 20 plus starts under their belt. And I'm watching two quarterbacks that don't have a great plan. When that blitz or an unblocked defender comes their way, you have got to find a way to throw it in the stands, avoid the big negative losses, have to play another day. Right up the middle goes Jahad Thomas to get back the yardage that was lost on the sack. But now it's going to be third down and long. As we... Ninth play of the drive for Temple. Have a plan. They'll run it. Jahad Thomas with all kinds of room. Bounces it to the outside. Inside the 10. At the 2. First and goal for the Owls. They run it on third down and 10. And Jahad Thomas almost scored. That's been the best offensive call of the day for Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator for Temple. I love it. Quick hitter inside. Got a three-man front. Looked like it was going to be either a zone blitz or some eight-man drop in Penn State. And you caught them right in between once again. Been a little bit of the theme of this drive. Other than the negative play, you have got Penn State on their heels. And for a game that Penn State dominated, Bob, for 25 minutes, at least statistically speaking, Defense withstood that brunt for Temple, giving their offense a chance to get it going, and man, have they ever on this drive. The toss to Jahad Thomas, right at the goal line. He's brought down short. It'll be second down and goal from inside the one. Thomas is Temple tough. That's a refrain we heard an awful lot yesterday in the building there with head coach Matt Rule. Really an identity. They looked at themselves in the mirror this offseason. Not an identity crisis, but much more getting back to who they are, the kind of kids they want to develop and recruit. Thomas wearing that number five, voted by his teammates as one of the nine toughest. He's off the field now. It's Jagger Gardner, a true freshman, who's in at tailback with Nick Sharga, 240-pound fullback, trying to pave the way. Did Sharga do the job? He did not. As Gardner is stopped short by Gary Wooten. Now it's third down and goal inside the one. Not a bad job right at the point of attack. You didn't see Penn State push that line of scrimmage back. But an excellent play by Gary Wooten Jr. filling in for the injured Naeem Wartman White. You cannot hesitate. Plays on this goal line in the red zone. Speed up on everybody. An excellent job there by the backup playing fast. P.J. Walker, the counter toss, walking in the end zone. A touchdown for Jahan Thomas. Some advantages to having an entire month to get ready for an opponent. Some good wrinkles. The third 10, little trap play, and that time flip nine catching Penn State's eyes in the backfield. And Thomas delivering and huge momentum as you push into halftime. A Temple offense that was unable to pick up a first down until the end of the first quarter just went 93 yards in 12 plays. 10-7 our score at halftime. Penn State on top. Now it's time for Adnet with Danny Cannell and Joey Galloway, the Lexus Halftime Report. A stone's throw from downtown Philly here at Lincoln Financial Field. We're just about set for the start of the third quarter. And it's Penn State holding on to a 10-7 lead over Temple. Bob Wischusen, Brock Hewitt, Shannon Spake here. The momentum, though, on the side of the Owls. Trailed by 10, got a big drive before halftime, punched it in for their first score. And he, they seem right now to have Penn State's offense especially guessing. They're on their heels, and they're throwing lots of blitzes at Christian Hackenberg. And if you're a Penn State fan, you watch those 30 minutes and said, man, did that look familiar to last season when Hackenberg took a beating with 44 sacks. And he has one more completion five than he does time sack, and that is four. The last four possessions looked exactly like last season. 18 yards, multiple sacks, as you document there. And I think more than anything, you have got to get back to your plan of dictating the tempo. Away with all of this check with me, get into the perfect play. Just use some of your athleticism and take some shots down the field. 
Austin Jones is going to give Penn State terrific field position as he simply hooks it out of bounds. Well, let's check in with Shannon. Well, Bob, you guys mentioned the momentum swing in this game, certainly on Temple's side right now. One of the turning points in that first half was when the Temple defense was finally able to get a stop. Well, moments before that stop, after Penn State scored on them twice, senior linebacker Tyler Matikavich came over to his guys and he said, what have we been talking about all week? We can't beat ourselves, and that's what we're doing. They went out, they got that stop, turned the momentum around, and Coach Rule told me just moments ago another turning point was when they were able to get the run game developed. So Certainly look for them to continue doing that in the second half. Well, they'll need to as Penn State still has the field goal lead. But this could be, in terms of momentum swings, a huge opening drive for the Nittany Lions. Can they get something going as Akeel Lynch with a nice cutback and a broken tackle? Well, that's one way to get some offensive momentum going. Give it to your best running back and let him go to work and pick up 16. And he had the biggest play of the first half, the long touchdown run, and, and getting that mix of run and pass. 20 runs, 11 passes for Temple. And as you see with Penn State, as they got out of rhythm, had no success really in that run game to counterbalance that passing game and those shots that you're capable of taking downfield once you get that run game established. Only a yard this time for Lynch into the heart of that defense for Temple, led, of course, by Tyler Matikavich. We were talking about the numbers that he's put up, and they are extraordinary. He's trying to become only the seventh player in the history of FBS to tack together four consecutive 100-plus tackle seasons. Instincts. And he's in on the stop once again. Of Akia Lynch after a gain of two. Now it's third down and seven. Nate D. Smith was the first there for the Owls. And he's had the help of his buddies up front as well. And Ionitis and Robinson and Hershey Walton, who's played a bunch of ball. This is as veteran a defense as you're going to find in all of college football. You have one sophomore, the rest are all juniors and seniors, and for three years, like Ionitis, have played together. That's why they can have those difficult conversations on the sideline in game, really hold one another accountable and handle the momentum that was so one way early in this game that the defense really changed. Here comes the blitz. Hackenberg underneath Aaron throw. Saeed Blacknall is the intended receiver and Hackenberg a little shaken up, shaking that throwing arm and elbow out. Either the wrist or the elbow is hurting Christian Hackenberg. And Matikeva is showing you that he is not just a tackler, but he drives Lynch right into Hackenberg's lap. That time, good protection. Good adjustment at halftime. Get to a seven-man pr protection, keep your back in, tight end in. And that stings. He, he's, he's doing that as a guy that's felt that before. You're trying to get some of that feel back as the hand goes right into the helmet of Lynch. Angling the punt is Pascarello to the far left corner, and it goes out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Look at all the university boathouses along the Schuylkill River. William Penn chose the Schuylkill in 1682 as one bank of the confluence upon which he would found the planned city of Philadelphia. And that's where we are in the plan right now for Penn State. Not going according to plan offensively as they have for the second time been stopped in plus territory by the Temple defense. And now Temple goes back to work. Jahad Thomas gets around the edge and picks up about five yards. So second and five coming for the Owls. Now sooner or later, the Owls have to start stringing together offensive possessions to take advantage of the great work their defense has done. Neither offense has done a good job of capitalizing on what their respective defenses have done to this point. No, and it's a credit to two really good defenses. Penn State was the number two total defense in all of college football last year, and they are making Temple earn it every single play. And, and finishing many of their tackles well. And on the flip side, Temple has really gotten the Nittany Lions completely out of any offensive tempo and rhythm. Up the seam, wide open, reaching back, kick out in the tight end. Out close to the 45-yard line, a quick pop pass from P.J. Walker, picks up 20. Caught up with offensive coordinator Marcus Satterfield on the field before the game, and I said, okay, I've got my play sheet. You've had an entire month to get your plan ready. Give me a little X factor. Give me somebody that, that maybe we have not been familiar with, and he pointed right to Patton. 
Played defensive line last year to toughen him up. Really feels like with what they want to grow into in their two tight end package that he can be a difference maker in the passing game. And P.J. been really efficient today, taking care of the ball, completing 80 percent plus of his passes. It's excellent execution on the play action pass. A reverse. Want to throw the footballs, John Christopher, wide open, he's got the quarterback, P.J. Walker. A trick play works perfectly for the Owls, and they've got a first down to the Penn State 31. Couple single-digit guys, and Christopher, the redshirt senior wide receiver, wearing that number seven, is one of the nine toughest guys on this team, and that's all about timing and hitting your opponent at the right time with that play call. We saw it on that 93-yard drive. Loved a couple of those offensive decisions in that time, that area of the field. That's why I wanted to see Hackenberg and, and Penn State take a shot. You're right there at the 40-yard line or so. Perfect position to take a little bit of risk and make it pay off. Play action again for Walker. Long throw to the sideline, incomplete. Up over the head of Robbie Anderson. And let's go back down to Shannon Spake. Yeah, Bob Walker as a receiver, that's something they practiced this week. I saw it at practice when I went there on Thursday. And when I asked PJ about that, he said, yeah, you might see it in the game. I really want to be a receiver and catch a touchdown and score in that position. So it might not be the last time we see it here today. They hit it at exactly the right time. I think it's also worth noting here, Penn State without Naeem Wartman White, their difference making middle linebacker went out in the second quarter on a punt cover play, has not back. Penn State officials have no word on his standing, but he is out of this game. Walker hit as he throws, and somehow it finds its way to Robbie Anderson for a gain of 11. It'll be third down and nine, but that easily could have been a turnover as P.J. Walker took a shot from Carl Nassib and a very fortunate pass that finds its way to Anderson. How do you display your toughness at the quarterback position as Nassib at 6'7", 270 is bearing down on you? You don't pick up the end tackle stunt. You're absolutely right. Nine out of ten times that ball's in the air and it's going the other way. That's a good sign for the Temple Owls and a better sign is your quarterback, even with a blitz in his face or pressure bearing down on him, has the guts to stand in and deliver. Huge play here. Third down and nine inside. Of seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Jahad Thomas shaking and baking to the edge. And now what do you do if you're Temple? It's fourth down and short. You're in field goal range. You could tie the game. It'll be fourth down. It points. looks like about a full two yards. You get your points. The way your defense has played, what in the world have they shown Matt Rule for two and a half quarters? They've shown him that they've got Hackenberg and Penn State on the ropes. Yeah, you pay this off with a kicker, unfortunately, last year, just 13 to 22 on the season. It'll be a 40-yard kick from just inside the right hash. Austin Jones only 59% last season. This to tie the game. Tommy Broadway with a perfect hold. And right down the middle, Austin Jones with a perfect kick. So Temple gets their points, and we are tied at 10. 6.23 to go in the third. Low scoring and a lot of fun here in Philly. Bob Shoes and Brock Ewart, Shannon Spake. And speaking of Philly tough, give some credit to Temple. They took that first quarter, as you said, Brock, punched to the gut, and they have now responded and chipped away at this Penn State lead to get the game tied at 10 late here in the third. Sure have. And you and I travel across college football and see a lot of facilities. And you can go to Penn State, and they've got all the facilities in the world, like all the SEC schools. That's not what Temple has. We were over there yesterday, and they grind, and they work, and they develop. They don't have the best facilities in the world, but they've got a lot of kids that believe. Cole Farmer using the stiff arm. Runs a man over all the way out to about the 34-yard line. So now, as we go back down to Shannon Spake, Shannon, we're going to have Christian Hackenberg on the field. And you had an opportunity to observe him while Temple had the ball. What did you see from Hackenberg? You know, Bob, last year we saw Christian Hackenberg. We saw some emotions from him on the sideline, good and bad. Right now, just watching him, he's not letting the frustration. Certainly he's frustrated, but he's not letting it get the best of him. He seems very poised standing over here with his guys. Back to the offense for Penn State. Christian Hackenberg trying to get on track. Quick throw and a good one to Chris Godwin. And he's wrestled out of bounds after a gain of eight by Sean Chandler. 
This is where I go. This is where you just got to play fast. When you're in the rut that you've been in for seven possessions, get up to the line. You've got some calls that you know you can call regardless of the look. Protect and, and establish that tempo yourself. Intercepted. It could be a pick six. Inside the five-yard line right at the pylon is Sharif Finch. He's in for the touchdown. Finch does is make plays. I think the ball is going to come back. I think we're going to take another look at this one. It's going to be at the two-yard line, but that's all this kid has done. Two touchdowns on returns a season ago. Hackenberg trying to sneak that quick hitch in. Another zone pressure. Finch dropping out from his end position. Sees the whole play right in front of him. It certainly appears as if he is at least at about the two-yard line when his foot touches out of bounds. The runner was down with the ball at the two-yard line. At which point it will be Temple's ball, first and goal. Please reset the game clock for 1-13, 1-1-3. Rock, you talked about how during a football season and inside a football game you will be faced with adversity. It's hard to imagine right now Christian Hackenberg facing more adversity than throwing an interception to a defensive end after seven straight ineffective possessions. About to lose, you would think, a 10-0 lead to at least a field goal, if not a Temple touchdown. The next time Christian Hackenberg is on the field, he's going to be out there trying to bring his team from behind, it looks like, barring Temple short-circuiting at the two. P.J. Walker with a beautiful fake, and the quarterback takes it over from one yard out, and the Owls have the lead for the first time today. Is P.J. Walker hurt? Slow to get up. He took a shot when he scored the touchdown. Let's take another look. <laughs> 17 unanswered points for Temple. A 10-0 Penn State lead in the first quarter. Becomes a 17-10 Temple lead as we're almost through three quarters. Temple tough. Going to come into view here in the final 16 minutes. Koa Farmer from the goal line. To the 25. So he's trying to bounce back from really what was a bad sophomore season. And now Akia Lynch getting stuffed at the line. Sets up second down and 15. All right, that man, Brandon Polk. He's got speed out on the edge. And they're trying to get him the ball in space. And he's brought down for no gain. Tavon Young makes the stop for Temple. Now it's third down and 15. And just look at the body language. Look at how fast Temple's playing defensively. There is no fear whatsoever in any of those Temple Owl defenders. None. That's and bad. why should there be? If Penn State is taking no shots, he's not threatening the field at all. And Hackenberg just looking underneath right now with an offense looking completely lost over the last two and a half quarters. Penn State has two first downs since the end of the first quarter. And we head to the fourth with Temple on top by a touchdown. I'm going back. We start the fourth quarter with Temple trying to break a 39-game unbeaten streak in this matchup between themselves and Penn State. 17-10. The Owls have the lead in Christian Hackenberg and the offense for Penn State. They have been sputtering since the first quarter, and they start the fourth quarter facing third down and 15. Three-man rush, a two-man rush, and Hackenberg still is pursued and sacked. Inexcusable for Penn State. Nate
Nate D. Smith on a two-man rush gets the sixth Temple sack. Hey, Bob, that just cannot happen. We, we, we can put all the burden of productivity on the quarterback, but eventually, as you said, when they're dropping into coverage and five can't block two, embarrassing. And you can see Hackenberg, he's doing his part. He's going, he's going over there, he's trying to cheer those guys up, but yeah, all phases of this offense right now totally discombobulated. And Temple could very easily end up with terrific field position again. A line drive punt. Robbie Anderson from his own 33. Turns the corner. He's got some blockers out in front. Out of bounds at midfield. It was Daniel Pascarella, the punter, that eventually pushed him out right at the 50. Jahad Thomas behind the line. Jordan Lucas comes up to make the tackle for a three yard loss and you're going to expect to see some of the veteran leaders on this Penn State defense say enough is enough 17 point points not indicative of the way they have played they have really done their part on the, on, on the defensive side of the ball that's Zettel that's Lucas that's Johnson but this is also the point where you have watched your offense sputter for three quarters and you know you have to make a game changing play that just doing your assignment may not be enough. One on one to the outside. That's just where Walker looks. Floats it down the sideline. Incomplete flag throw. Trevor Williams on Brandon Shippen. And whether that's a good call or not, do you see the difference with a team that's willing to take some shots and one that won't? Hackenberg has not thrown a pass over 15 yards for a completion. He has attempted one the entire game. Pass interference, defense number 10, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And it's a questionable call. There's some contact here as the senior Williams. You know, I think it's contact both ways. Frankly, that shouldn't be called. But that's what happens. Good things can happen to you. When you put your, the, the pass in a position where your guy gets it or nobody, well, he may go up and make an incredible play, and you may also be fortunate to get a pass interference call. If the ball never travels more than six yards from the line of scrimmage, you're not going to get a 15-yard pass interference call. And right now, Christian Hackenberg of the Penn State offense, they're playing a game in the box, basically. Their entire offense is operating within eight yards of the line of scrimmage. Well said. In the shell. Shell shocked. Wide open again. It's the tight end running a crossing route. Check that Adonis Jennings. He's got eight yards. Very close to another Temple first down. It's 6-3 at buck 95. He looks like a tight end. And what a nice target to have. And you have seen that same concept a bunch. When Penn State has not brought pressure and played their zone defense, it's been tight ends. It's been wide receivers on those shallow crosses. And the important part when you throw that is a catch and run ball. Do not make him slow up. Do not make him look at the defenders around him. Give him opportunity to catch a turn up field. PJ's done that this afternoon. PJ e. Walker with a handoff to Jahad Thomas. And now it will be third down. Carl Nassib, Anthony Zettel doing what they are best at, and that is disrupting along the line of scrimmage. And boy, is this a must stop for the Penn State defense on this play. Third down and four, and maybe not yet in field goal range. And you see the emotion and the reaction right there. That's a former walk-on redshirt senior playing the best game of his career. A sack earlier, a tackle for loss in that situation, a proud defense on, on their side of the ball as well that knows the importance of this one. Matt Rule said he wanted his team at the 25-yard line to feel comfortable kicking a field goal. Jahad Thomas is going to get them there with a first down. They run for it on third down and three and a half and pick it up. But you can run it. You can run an inside play like that because you have threatened the defense. You have threatened them with P.J.'s ability to run and scramble. You have threatened them by mixing in some pass, threatened them by taking some shots. 
That only occurs because of the balance the Temple has had throughout this game. Jahan Thomas with a cut back to the outside. Another move in the secondary. He's got another Temple touchdown. Four years, 1941. The last time a Temple team beat their in-state opponent, Penn State. It's not over yet, but it's a two-score game with 11:14 to go. P.J. Walker and Jahan Thomas were high school teammates in Elizabeth, New Jersey. They won a state championship in Elizabeth. They've got a chance I'm to break a 74-year drought today against Penn State. You're looking for senior leadership at times like this. Penn State, they've got Anthony Zettel. That was while we were away. That's not offensive players. That's not defensive players. That's not just special team players. That's basically the whole team, Brock, that was around their first team all Big Ten defensive tackle. And he was trying to explain, in probably no uncertain terms, what he's expecting is going to happen for Penn State in the next 11 minutes. Well, Bob, remember, he's one of six. That's all that's left. Six from that year that had Joe Paterno, that's seen all the turmoil that has been through everything. The jerseys, the name coming back on the jerseys, the names coming off, all of, all of the adversity that this program has been through. And he does not want to be a part of it that loses to this program in Temple for the first time since 1941. Koa Farmer brought down before he even gets to the 20 yard line. Well, a huge comeback is now what Christian Hackenberg and Penn State have to have. There's still plenty of time. You're down two scores with over 11 minutes to go. You've got all the time in the world, but it has to start happening down the field, you would think, for Penn State as Akeel Lynch goes up the gut for four. And last season against Temple, Christian Hackenberg, well, he didn't put up good numbers, but his defense took the ball away. Yeah, two pick sixes. I mean, it's the exact same game that I'm watching. Uh, they were in a box. There were no shots down the field. There was no explosiveness. It was supposed to be a different script this year, and it's not. Under pressure and sacked for the seventh time today. Jacob Martin gets him this time. How can you push the ball down the field if you can't protect your quarterback? Well, and it doesn't matter if it's two guys, three guys, that time a four-man rush. Those ears are pinned back for Temple. They, those defensive linemen feed off of it. It's a frenzy. Here's four sacks. Here's five sacks. Here's six sacks. Whose opportunity is it next? Seven sacks by six different players. Third down and 12. Three-man rush. A check down. That loses four more. Matt Ioannidis diagnosed that play perfectly for Temple. And it's another three and out for Penn State. Well, they're trying to set up the screen pass right there. And uh, you can do that against certain guys, maybe young players. Look at Ioannidis. He's running the screen before the running back even does. Sharif Finch with the interception. He's running his zone scheme. He's running the route as the receiver does. Temple. It's just done a phenomenal job being on point week one attention to detail in a veteran defense that is so far out distancing now playing Penn State's offense. Now it's special teams helping out Temple. A good punt return by Sean Chandler and Temple. They've scored 24 unanswered points and they're going to start inside of the Penn State 40 yard line. What a performance thus far by the Owls. Welcome back to Philadelphia, where there has not been any brotherly love between Temple and Penn State today. And Temple, they have scored 24 unanswered points, and they have dominated Penn State since the end of the first quarter. And they start this drive on Penn State's side of the 50. Jahad Thomas brought down behind the line, but seven Temple sacks of Christian Hackenberg. That's been the story, Brock. And every one of them built a little differently. This was number seven on second down. You tell me where Christian Hackenberg has an outlet to throw the football. 
we have been clamoring for them to take a shot. But as you can see, you tell me, you've got a safety coming over the seam. Look, look, look at this. Look at the spacing. There is no spacing in the route concept. There is no place for Hackenberg to go. And that four-man rush, three-man rush, has collapsed the pocket around him. Number 14 will take all the heat in central Pennsylvania. That's what comes with the position and the attention. But the reality today is it's been a total team offensive effort. Protection, route timing, play calling, not pretty. P.J. Walker, wide open down the sideline. Ramon Deloach, there's no one near him. And just like that, Temple, they're back knocking on the door of the red zone. And you've got Penn State just guessing defensively. You know, I said to you earlier, it felt like maybe a time for them within the scheme to do a little more, but you can't get so far outside the scheme, and you could see the frustration mountain. That's the big fella in the middle there, Austin Johnson, the redshirt junior. And shouldn't be surprised. This, this is a team with huge expectations coming in. This was a team that felt really good about their size and their strength and their speed. But they're not dual today. DJ Walker on a keeper. No. Gary Wooten. One on one makes the tackle for a two, maybe a three yard loss. Ball security. Game and clock management. P.J. got banged up on the shoulder. Good to see that he feels like he can still pull the ball and run it. Matt Rule knows right now this is his game to win. In complete control and has so thoroughly beat up Penn State and dominated their offense as you see another Nittany Lion. That one being Brandon Bell banged up. Wartman White is already out of this game. A number of Nittany Lions have been beat up this afternoon. Right up the middle to about the 20 yard line goes Jahad Thomas. And if you're Temple here, you play for a field goal. To me, Brock, a field goal here is every bit as good as a touchdown. Yeah, this becomes your best friend right here. You keep that thing running. You have a quarterback that's been there, incredibly experienced. In his third year as a starter, he's got to manage this thing on out. And a field goal makes it a three possession game. And they are very content to run it right up the gut at the Penn State defense and almost pick up a first down. Depends on where they mark Jahad Thomas down. The nose of the football is right on our first down line. This will most likely require a measurement. Now they're going to just say that it's fourth down, and why not? Just bring out the field goal unit. And that's exactly what Matt Rule will do. Yeah, this is pretty confusing to not get a measurement as close as this one appears. Since the end of the first quarter, it's been a domination by the Owls. And this to make it a three-score game. Perfect. Austin Jones is two for two. It's a 17-point Temple lead over Penn State with under six minutes to go. A shocker here in Philadelphia. Koa Farmer, he has been back here returning kicks far too often since the end of the first quarter. To the 21-yard line. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, Bob, the fire that we've seen here tonight from Temple really started at the end of last season after their final regular season game. After that game, after that victory, they thought they had made it to a bowl. Well, the next day, Coach Rule had to bring his guys into a meeting, had to tell them all that they were not in because of a tiebreaker. I talked to Matt Ioannidis about that. He said he looked around the room. There was a lot of emotions, especially looking at the seniors who had fought so hard and never made it to a bowl. Well, Ioannidis is a senior this year, and he told me it's not going to happen again. Their motto, all seniors. Season or all offseason has been leave no doubt, and you've seen that here tonight, absolutely. Well, with the scoreboard the way it is right now, leave no doubt will certainly describe how Temple has performed in these last three quarters. This result is shocking enough, but if you watch the first quarter, it's an absolute stunner. And now Christian Hackenberg just hoisting one down the sideline, and there's Chris Godwin making a play. Well, it took forever for Penn State to throw the ball down the field, and Godwin hauls it in across the 50. How difficult was that? You got a one-on-one, -on -one, put some air on the ball, let your guy go up and make a play. You saw him go 34 for 50 for 371 yards and four touchdowns in a pinstripe bowl doing and making plays just like that. Now it's second down and 15. 
And then you shoot yourself in the foot with a false start. Too many pre-snap penalties. Now Matt Rule said, I, I know my team is going to be ready if we avoid all these pre-snap jitters. And they have. They have completely, for three quarters, eliminated their own mental mistakes. And unfortunately, Penn State takes a step forward. And then a mental error of their own pre-snap before even the activity begins, two steps back. four-man rush. They simply can't protect Christian Hackenberg as Matt Ioannidis brings him down. Third down and 22. Fourth down and 22. And he has to get rid of that ball. A second before his receiver's ready because once again these defense alignment for Temple and give them all the credit in the world. They're getting on edges. It, some of it has been schematic with some of these different blitzes. But with a three-man rush, a four-man rush, this offensive line that was supposed to have four starters back, such encouragement to have guys that have been there and done it. And you welcome in and 73, Paris Palmer, one of the best JUCO tackles. Not close tonight. It's a three-man rush that flushes Christian Hackenberg out of the pocket again. Errant on the throw, a turnover on downs. And now the party will really start to rock in that Temple student section. Four and a half minutes to go with the football and a three-possession lead. And about to end a drought that goes all the way back to 1941, the last time that Temple beat the Nittany Lions. And where does this offense Brock and where does that quarterback go from here? How do you shake off a performance like this looking at the Big Ten schedule? That's still three weeks away. Well, you have to. Uh, the good news for them, their next five are all at home. They don't have to leave the state of Pennsylvania. They'll be in their own building. You're going to welcome in Buffalo. You got Rutgers, San Diego State, Army, Indiana teams that that don't and won't throw a defense like Temple has at you. But you better start instilling some belief and confidence. You better start getting the ball out of your hands. You better get your playmakers involved. The fact that Deshaun Hamilton has a catch for five yards tonight, inexplainable. Now some pride being shown by Austin Johnson. He's certainly maybe the best NFL prospect on either side of the ball in the end that, that Penn State has. He could be a force, and he makes a five-yard loss occur there. Last time out called by James Franklin. After the final Penn State timeout, third down at 14 for Temple. And they'll play it safe. And getting to the edge is Jahan Thomas. All the way down to the 15 yard line. Hard to believe. 28 more yards for Jihad Thomas. When you know the run is coming. To put in perspective, Jihad Thomas, 384 yards a season ago. Leading rusher with 384 yards on an entire season. Teammates love him. Voted him one of the nine toughest players on this team. That's why he wears a single digit. Felt like he would be a really good fit as they've gotten away from some of their spread, tempo, no huddle, gotten back to some of the basics of football, putting your hand in the ground, beating up the guy next to you. Career game for Thomas. They'll lose a couple here. But that will take us down inside of three and a half minutes to go. And you can see how worn down mentally as well the Penn State defense is because it's got to be hard 
to get stops as they did and keep this game close for a long time and keep on going back over to the sideline and watching your offense sputter and hand the ball back it, to Tim. It was three and out. It was three and out. It was 10 to zero. It was a pressure and it was Deshaun Hamilton for a touchdown in a game that could have been 17 to zero in the second quarter. And how differently would it have been for Matt Rule to dig out of that hole? Instead, they miss. They don't take another shot. They allow Temple to come back right into this game. Eight sacks later have completely turned every bit of momentum. Raquel Armstead for two yards. Penn State has punted nine times today. And as good as this Temple defense is, when you've got a guy that everyone, it seems, might vary on where they would put him in the first round, but most seem to think that Christian Hackenberg's a first-round draft choice at quarterback. You're not thinking against an American conference team that you're going to have a coach looking that frustrated. And this is going to ramp up the airwaves in Pennsylvania College Station. This is going to ramp up a lot of the talk shows because Christian Hackenberg didn't have days like this with Bill O'Brien. When he threw for 2,900 yards and, and ran the show in the pro-style system, this is going to, to start to get the conversation going of what, what's going on and what's wrong with this system. And why isn't it getting the best out of Christian Hackenberg? Been coaching for decades, but I might as well draw him up on toilet paper if we can't protect. Because they don't mean a lick. And until this crew figures out some protection and cohesion with quarterback, with play calling, with being able to at least give him an opportunity to hitch and hitch at times, you're going to see days like this and nights like this. But eight sacks for Matt Rule, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Temple is going to go for it on fourth down and 11. Why not? They could take the game clock all the way down inside of 90 seconds to play. So even if they fail to convert, they'll hand the ball back to Penn State with a three score lead. Jahad Thomas on fourth down almost got to the edge again. But with 1.16 to go, Temple will give the ball back to Penn State on downs. A Penn State team that ended last season on a high. They won an overtime pinstripe bowl at Yankee Stadium against BC in what really pure and simply was Christian Hackenberg's best game of the year. Yep. I mean, if you spent the whole winter and the whole spring and summer waiting for college football in state college as a Penn State fan, you're thinking that's going to be the type of performance you build off of. And now it seems like you've regressed to all the problems you had last year all over again as Godwin makes a catch out to the 25 yard line and I think what you're talking about is validation and that little conversation between Matt rule and quarterback is we're good Hey, we're good. We spent the last month kind of quietly totally under the radar Most people probably picking Penn State today We know we are a good team when it's all put together and you play the defense are capable of and here's sack number nine Wow as the embarrassment just continues Matt Ioannidis gets another and on the flip side is invalidation We've got four starters back on an offensive line Right, we can build off that pinstripe game in, 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 the, in the last month is, is going to <laughs> force you into a difficult bus ride home of evaluation. Pardon me, that was Matikiewicz on the sack. Nine sacks for the Temple defense. And ten. Make it ten. Nate D. Smith brings Hackenberg down all the way back inside the ten-yard line. Ever seen something like this? Ten sacks? I've, I've never called a game in ten years of this. Do you even run another play? Why expose your quarterback to getting hit again? The game's over. Just shake hands. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. Ten Temple sacks highlight a 27-point unanswered run. And the Owls have done it. They have beat Penn State for the first time since 1941. As Shannon Spake said, leave no doubt was the war cry this week for Temple, and they have accomplished that and then some. As James Franklin now has to regroup as his team goes down. Let's send it now to College Football Scoreboard, followed by Arizona State and Texas A&M. So long from Philadelphia.